Hey guys, we are so glad that you joined us today. Throughout the next few months, our pastors are speaking on legacy, and we encourage you to stay connected to our midweek and weekend services. We are so glad that you are part of our church family, and we hope that you enjoy today's message. A lot of wonderful things happening in the community. Um, had a great day yesterday. Some new members joined the house and did some training for uh, people serving. If you, if you were in the new members class and you're here at this first service, would you... I don't know if anybody's here. You kind of wave your hand. God bless you. Welcome. Yeah, good to see you. Welcome. Good to see you there. Hey, yeah, welcome. Amen. Praise God. Welcome to the family. Praise God. Um, and then we did some, um, just some fun things. I did a, a wedding for Helen Conway. Helen had, had uh, got married yesterday. Some of you guys were there. And it was just a, just a really sweet wedding. Um, in the afternoon. And Helen's just a beautiful person. And her husband. Reggie, Reggie um, came up and he sang, you know, the progressional, when she comes in, he sang a song. I think it was a, like a Stevie Wonder song. Man, and it was, it was good. He was, I was shocked. I was, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't have sang that. I mean, I wouldn't, I couldn't sing the Dare's Dead anyway, but she wouldn't have come down the aisle me singing. <laughs> Is this what I'm in for? No. I mean, you know. But this guy was good. I mean, wow. It's amazing. It just it was a sweet day and a lot of good things happening. Uh, you know that God loves you and he's for you. And there's, there's times and seasons and ebbs and flows and everything in life. But w- when all of it's said and done, you're going to recognize God is for me and he loves me. The challenge the challenge, it's not really a challenge, it's the reality of it. Sometimes you don't really realize that as you're going through it because there's, the, the trimmings are negative and difficult and struggles and you don't really realize it until sometimes you're after. So have you ever heard the phrase, if, if I knew back then <laughs> what I know now, it means my behavior would have been different. So I... I always say to the Lord, well, you already know, so show me now. Show me now so I don't get into the, into the future and would have desire to change my behavior. I want my behavior now to line up to a great future. I mean, you ought to, you ought to use that because the Spirit knows everything. You ought to use that in your financial realm. You need to say, Lord, you know now the company that's going to rock the world tomorrow. Show me now. Let me put some money into that company now. Let me put it in Microsoft when it was micro. <laughs> they didn't add the soft yet. You know, when it was Amazon, before it was Amazon, right? Let, let God do some things for you because you belong to him. Why not use that? Why not be born again and take the benefits and the privileges of being in the kingdom of God and use them to advance the life that God has given you so you can be salt and light in an environment of darkness? What's going to distinguish you from the rest of the world? The love of God. The victory of Yeshua. We are overcomers. We have overcome. So we want to build a legacy, a trail of blessing in our wake. So that people are enriched and restored and set free and healed. And God abundantly takes care of you and everything else that you need. There's a great flow. And there's things that you can never do. No way, no how that's going to happen for you. Way. He makes a way. I mean, that's just the way he is. So, so let's, I'm, I'm, I want to talk to you for next, eh, a little bit on, on just activating some specific things in your life. That, that create the culture that needs to be created so that you can do well. Listen, if you've, if you've, we've all been in a history class. In, in history, you can go back and your, history tells you the story of what was at a time in the past. It's history. Um, and then there's certain things that happen that lead to other things that happen, that leads to other things that happen that create a culture. It's like, so uh, in technology, um, this, this couldn't have happened. This iPad that I'm going to preach from 
couldn't have happened 100 years ago. Didn't happen a couple hundred years ago. Why? Because there was no support system to make this come to pass, this idea to come to pass. It was probably an idea in somebody's mind. You know, the whole Star Trek deal <coughs> where, the, where the, the wireless communicator or you press your button or a phone, something on your wrist, Scotty. <laughs> they got two days. I can't do it, Captain, you know. And you go through this whole deal, and then now we live. We do that all the time. There's this kid yesterday, on, uh, Andre and Christian's son, talking on his, on his wrist. Yesterday. It's a phone, an Apple phone. He's talking on the phone in the lobby yesterday. I'm just saying that there's certain things that create cultures that now birth inventions and ideas and innovation. Listen, we can do that spiritually. We can create now. You, God's giving you a pattern. Listen, if it can happen in the natural realm through technology, I'm telling you, you can do it spiritually. We can create some things in the times and seasons and prepare so then something explosive happens from a spiritual realm and transition happens all around this region in ways you've never seen before and you think it's because of it happening then. No, that's just the byproduct or the results. It already started. And I'm telling you today, it's already started. It's already started. God is determined to do what he's going to do, an extraordinary thing for you and your family. You, you need to do the little things to get yourself in place and in agreement with what God is doing. Okay, God. You're the great God. You can, you can create something that's, that's never been done before. Do it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm in agreement. I'm ready. And so then the Lord starts moving you into position to do that. So we're going to talk about one of those things today. Just one. And I want to, want to just start the creating this culture of life. So let's turn with me to Genesis chapter 3. And let's get started. It says, The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat. And live forever. I'm reading from the NIV version today. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Let's look at a couple of things we've learned from just that reality. Uh, this, this statement that I'm reading is after Adam and Eve have, have rebelled against God, deceived by Satan. And they've eaten of the tree of knowledge. And now their eyes are open. And they, and they, they know good and evil. You know, God did not really design for you to know good and evil. The design is for you to know good, not evil. There is no evil in God. Evil comes from Satan. There's no evil in God. There's only good in God. God doesn't want you to know evil. He wants you to know good. He wants you to experience good. He wants your heart to be good. He wants your family to be good. He wants your health good, your finance good, your relationships good. He loves to fill you with good. He, he, he can't even get you enough good. He's, you're going to be fat, gordo, with good. So when God sees that man has, knows both good and evil, he goes, man, I cannot let them eat from the tree of life and live forever knowing good and evil. When all I want them to know is good. Because I'm going to abolish evil. Listen, you're, we're, there, you're coming into a life habit when you step into the heavens where you will only experience good, not evil. There's no, there's no evil there. There's only good. God doesn't want you to experience evil. He wants you to experience good. So the first thing he does, he takes Adam and Eve who are naked and he covers them. You ought to get into a practice in your own life that you cover the people that are in a bad place. Don't expose them. Cover them. 
Don't point your finger. You're no good. Sorry. Cover them. Cover them. Your wife makes a mistake. Cover her. Your husband makes a mistake. Cover it. Cover it. I'm not saying hide it. I'm saying take, take the blow for the challenge that's coming in your house. So you make a couple bad financial decisions and you're the leader of the house. You're, you know, the, the subordinate shouldn't say, you're the worst ever. You stink. I hate living here. You ought to say, listen, let's pray for this guy. Give me some wisdom, God. Help my, help my husband. Help my wife. Help my dad. Come on. You have the power to do that. And God will undergird and support that. So God takes Adam and Eve and they know good and evil now. They've become like us. I only want them to know good. So he starts this whole process now, watch this, of creating this culture of life, this culture of good. I'm going to encourage you that you can start the process of creating that culture in your house because cultures change behavior. Atmospheres change behavior. Whatever the atmosphere, the, the, your, your, um, your life will adjust to the atmosphere. You can, and you can create atmospheres all the time. You just try this. Just go smile at somebody. Just smile. They'll smile. Hey, how are you? They'll smile. You go, go up to a stranger. Hi, how you doing? They'll go, oh, I'm pretty good. How are you? <laughs> you don't even know that guy. Why? Because you just check just a mini. That's just a mini atmosphere, a mini culture that you created. And, and we are triggered for that. <coughs> Try this with somebody sometimes. <coughs> you could say to them, you're in a crowd or something, and you could say, listen, come here. Look over your right shoulder. There's a guy with a red hat, but don't laugh. Don't laugh. They're already laughing. The moment you introduce laughter into the equation, they're already laughing and they haven't even seen the guy with the red hat yet. Why? Because you introduced it. The moment you introduce don't laugh, it starts the whole process of laughter. It triggers something, the word laughter triggers something inside you that releases that. I'm just saying you have to learn that's, that understanding of humanity and how God has established for you to thrive and to be blessed and to bless others. We're, we're blessed to be a blessing. We're not blessed to hoard it on our own selfish desires. But you shouldn't get rid of the blessing because people use it inappropriately. So God covers their sin. Cover, cover, don't hide, cover. Make, be the difference maker for him. So he, so he says, I don't want you to live forever knowing good and evil. So he drives him out of the garden and starts the process of rebuilding the earth, rebuilding proper relationships, rebuilding uh, an environment that's not in chaos. That's, so that's, what, that's the whole book. From Genesis He's rebuilding the whole atmosphere, the environment, to get rid of the chaos. And he's going to get rid of the chaos so that you can, you, us, our families, our households, the whole earth, can live a life that he originally designed us to live. I'm just saying you ought to get a mini. You ought to, you ought to start in your house and say, this is like, this is not heaven, but it's a mini. I'm just, I'm just trying to create something. That, that's nice, that's, that's, that's a representation of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. So that your marriage or your children or your resources or your health or your finance or your city can be a reflection. It can't be identical, but a reflection of the kingdom of God. You, you ought to be a reflection of Yeshua. When somebody is drawn to you, they ought to see Yeshua, Jesus, in you. They ought to see something in you that's attractive. Remember, I said this a couple of weeks ago. I said, God doesn't have any human characteristics. Humans have God characteristics. 
So if you ever say, man, if I was God, I, if I was God, I would do that. I'm sure God would do that. Why would he do that? He's not a, he's not a human. He has no human characteristics. He, we have God characteristics because we were created in the image of God. And we flip that sometimes and we think God is in our image. So I would do this. You've got to say, is this a God characteristic or is this just me? God wants you to prosper and do well. But that's not his highest goal. His highest goal is to flip this earth back into a culture of life. So let's, let's jump all the way to the end of the book and go to Revelations. J- Revelations 21, John says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Now watch this. A lot of stuff has gone on. You know, Abram has been born and died. Moses, the whole earth, Noah. I mean, it's it's a lot of history of stuff going on that's been setting up certain things for the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And so Jesus had to be set up too. Prophetic word about the Messiah. He's going to come. And what he's going to do is these things and cancel our sins. So Jesus has to be set up. Then God waits and he finds, finds Mary and Joseph and he, Sets things in motion and sends angels. He prophesies and declares certain things. Hey, get ready, get ready, get ready. That's a little bit what he's, what he's talking about. And then those people are ready and then Yeshua comes. Boom. Then he's hidden for a little bit. Then he has to run for his life too because Satan, evil, is trying to kill him. Don't, don't think sometimes there's not going to be some, some onslaught of, de- of demonic activity against your life. Yeah, it is. It comes and happens, but it can't stop you. You're unstoppable. If you, were, if you were stoppable, you'd already been stopped. you got to say, I'm unstoppable. Well, I've been through a lot of trouble in my life. You don't understand. I understand you're still standing here talking to me about th- something you've already come through. You're unstoppable, man. Let that be a signal to you that you can't be stopped. I'm not, but I was lucky. No, you're blessed. And the favor of God's on your life. Because God doesn't live in time. We do. You know that? He doesn't live in time. We live in time. So it's, it's, it's all the same thing to him. It's all the same, and I have to use a term of time, which doesn't exist in the, in the kingdom. It's all the same moment to God. But there is no moment because there's no time. Time is a function. A moment is a, time, a function of time. But there is no time. It just is. Let, let, me, let me say it like this. Um, we live in time. And so we record time. Pictures. Video. Why is that? So that later on in time, we can come back and remember and experience in time. Oh, you remember this? <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, I remember. Oh, you remember we used to live in so-and-so? Remember? When, oh, that's when you were born. Oh, it's a moment in time. And you remember all that? Oh, your wedding picture. <laughs> moment in time. And so you come back and relive those moments in time. But in the kingdom of God, there is no time. Just is. Every moment is. You don't lose anything in the kingdom. It just is. It always is. So you can move in and out of experiences in time. Sometimes you think, oh, I lost my, my mom or my dad and I didn't have any experience with him. You're going to have it. You're going to have it. You have the fullness of it. You're not going to lose anything. You, know, you don't lose anything in the kingdom of God. Because there, there's, there's, the time has been erased. erased. There's no pain, no sorrow, no difficulty, no crying, no struggle. Why? Because it's all been changed because God wants you to know good. And he's going to get his desire fulfilled. And you will know good. You'll know the good, the best of every aspect of living with God. Revelation 21, verse 1. Here's what John says. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. 
For the first heaven and the first, first earth, help me, had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. So the, the oceans are gone, and now it's just earth, lots of, lots of land. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. It was, it's radiant. The holy city is radiant. The, whole, the holy city is a city of God. It's where God dwells. It's not like, like territory like a city here. When, when, you, when you read the description of the city, the, the walls go into space. If it was the same dimensions as our city on the earth, the, you couldn't, the, if we were on an airplane at 33,000 feet flying, that airplane would fly into the wall of the city. The city is a huge city. What it represents, that the expanse of God, the, exp the, the majesty of God, the authority and power of the most high God is everywhere. I'm just, why am I telling you this? Because the God that you serve is a great God and he's chosen you. And there's things that you're constricted in that you need to break that. To break, break that fear. Come on. Break that and that sick, break that. God has not designed that for you to know evil. He's designed for you to know good. Amen. Does evil come? Yes, it does. Absolutely it does. But you can break some stuff. You can overcome some stuff. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. And he will dwell with them. And they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Somebody say, yay. yay. God's with us. You ever felt the presence of God or some, had a good moment or something? Or you ever been in the car and it's really cold, and you turn the heater on, you go, oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, because it just, it, just, it just gives you this warmth. That's God. I'm not saying God's a heater. Don't get me right. I'm just saying you can experience that blessing that comes from God. He will wipe away, verse 4, every tear from their eyes. Watch this. This is, this is kingdom. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things, gone. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling you, you, you ought to take a, you ought to reach and say, Father, let me, if that's the reality and there is no time. And I know right now this culture is filled with good and evil. But can I just get a little bit more good and tip more good into my atmosphere, into my city, into my household, into this nation? That's Jesus. You look at the life of Jesus, he would just mess them up because he was just implementing the principles of the kingdom. So he would, something that, wasn't out, that was out of order, he, sickness and disease, he would just come against it. No, no. What's your problem? I can't see. Well, open and see. I don't want to, want to walk. Well, walk. Because there was no, it's, it's in the kingdom. There's, there's not sickness and disease in the kingdom of God. He couldn't have established that in the earth if it wasn't already established in the kingdom. You can establish some things in the kingdom that are because you have dominion in the earth. I'm, I'm just saying. He who has was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Verse 5. Then he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, without time. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the well of life. Those who are victorious or overcomers will inherit all this, and I will be their God and they will be my children. You ought to, you ought to just park there for a second and say la. 
Selah means to muse, to think about it. You ought to park there for a second and say, God is giving me this. A lifestyle that there's no more death or pain or crying because the old stuff is gone and the new stuff has come. And I get some free stuff. Did you say give me water without cost? Free Water represents life and healing and restoration. Without cost, free, just because of my position with you in your kingdom as a son or a daughter? I need to activate that. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning fire. This is the second death. That's really reserved for the demonic, not for the righteous. And we have been made righteous in Christ Jesus. God wants to give you a victorious life. An incredible way of living. That's, that's, watch this. That's just not natural things better. Just not natural things better, so that you, so that you, 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 you just extend it. He wants to give you Zoe life. This is the God life, the life that this transcends even the, this natural realm, because you walk in a higher place. So that there's there's incredible joy in your life. Joy doesn't mean everything is joy, is is good, but there's joy. You understand what I'm saying? There's going to be times that just things are not good, but it's okay. Man, I'm just struggling with this, but it's okay. I got this. God's going to work this out for me. So how do you know, man? I am just in a struggle. He's like, man, listen, I just, I, I don't know how I can tell you I know, but I know. Is there's a spirit of God that's in me that's already shown me tomorrow, and I just know. I don't even know what's going to happen, but I know what's going to happen. And then it happens. This happens as God has designed because we're his sons and daughters. And the kingdom that is coming, that is in existence today, is, is no fear, no pain, no hardship, no, no difficulty. None of that stuff that's, that's every day in our life doesn't exist in the kingdom of God. And what I'm going to show you is how to just reach in and grab Open the door to the kingdom so that you can start the process of living that. Listen, not just for you. Don't get greedy. Not, you just let, let the warmth of that, of that blast warm you, but it's not just for you. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. It's, it's for everybody. The good things God has, it's for Everybody. You got to get into the, it's very, right now we spend our time as humans driving for ourselves. I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this, I'm going to make money, I'm going to get, push, 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 push. And then you die. Leave it to somebody else who will get that and says, okay, thank you. I'm going to push, 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 make more, make more, make more, push, push, push. Then you die. Pass you the next one. Thank you. I'm going to push, 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 go, go. Come on, stop. And experience the blessing that God has for you because you're his. And then give it away. Give joy away. Give peace away. Just give it away. Go by somebody else. Give it away. God's going to give you so much, so much resource, so much blessing, so much joy, so that you can't even spend it in your whole life. You have to just give it away. Hmm. Revelation 22.1. Next chapter. Then the angel showed me the river of, of the water of life. As clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Down the middle of a great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. He's describing now the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. This, don't don't regu regulate this to heaven because you're going to read... We're going to read that this, this is coming to the earth. 
this, what we're describing, this new Jerusalem, the holy city, is not locked in heaven. It's coming to the earth. This is God's desire is for the whole earth to be full of the glory of God. That's what he's reaching for through you. And it is going to happen. It has already happened. You are bringing your way into a new reality. And God is, is establishing his way in the earth. John sees it in Revelation where the, the new Jerusalem comes to the earth. On each side of the river, verse 2, stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. The fruit that God has given us can heal the nations. The fruit that God has given us can heal the nation. You know what the fruit is? Can you give me, give me one of the one of the the, uh, the characteristics of the fruit. Give me one. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, which is patience, kindness, goodness. Self-control. Yeah, self-control, meekness, humility. The fruit of the Spirit. You know who has access to those? You have access? Why don't you eat that fruit? Why don't you take that fruit and heal your house. Amen. If it can heal the nations, it sure can heal your house. It can heal the government. Take, take the fruit, man. Take, listen, if you just took the fruit and just became a problem solver with the fruit of the Spirit, it's amazing sometimes somebody in the world will unlock something, you know, like, oh, this is amazing. It's the most amazing. I've, ne- I've never seen anything like this. It just releases so much peace. I just feel peace. And you're like, it's amazing. Peace is such an amazing thing. And you're like, what? How is that a revelation? When you've been living it for your whole life, but your secret service, you go through your whole day, not share anything with anybody else, not open the door for them, not give them revelation and insight. You're just doing your thing. And I'm saying what we have to do is make our thing the world's thing. That's good. That's good. So the fruit's there to heal all the nations. The nations will be healed by the fruit of the Spirit. Because they need it. They need healing. And we're, we're agents of healing. The leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. No curse. Yay. No curse, yay. Anybody, got, anybody ever cut their grass? And you got more weeds than grass, it seems like. The weeds grow so fast, it's unbelievable. So you got certain chemicals and stuff you got to spray on to just get the lawnmower type, I mean, uh, golf course type like grass. Kudos to Russ and, and Wayne Calico that may do a phenomenal job of making this campus look good when we pull in in the morning. I praise God for these guys. Because, because in the earth, it's just a curse. And it, and it manifests itself in everything. You know, the car gets old, runs out of gas, all kind of issues. But, there's, but when there's no curse, when there's no curse, no curse. <laughs> That's so cool. No longer will there be any curse. The curse has been removed. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. That's huge. Um, do you know that, the, that you couldn't see God's face face to face? You couldn't see him face to face. Not even Moses, which is a holy man, could see God face to face. So God, Moses, made provision to say, Moses asked, can I see you face to face? And God says, if I... If you see me face to face in your condition, you're dead. But, but, but I want you to see me because you've gone through a whole lot and you're going to go through a whole lot more. <laughs> so I want you to see me. So I'm going to put you on this, on, behind this rock 
And when I go past, I'm going to declare my character and authority, my name. I'm going to reveal to you who I am and what is. Not what's going to be, because what is going to be is already is. She's telling me, you're just going to breathe your way into it. Listen, you know, when, when, let me give you a natural example just of a guy who may, may or may not know the Lord. But Bill Gates, when he, was, when he was like this, when he was Billy, before he was William Gates, when he was just Billy. Billy! You know, he was this guy. He, he was already going to be one of the richest men on the planet Earth. You know what I'm saying? It didn't, it didn't sometimes, it just shifted that. It, he, he, was just, he was just breathing his way into that reality. He may or may not have known that. I don't know. But God knew it. God knows things about you. You can know. You should go back into the throne and say, open up my eyes to see and my ears to hear what is. Because what is is going to be because it is. It already is. You just haven't experienced it yet, but it is. That's why in the scriptures, fill of prophetic words, and you shall be called, and, a, and a, he will give a birth to a virgin, and the virgin, Emmanuel, God is with us, and in his name, the nations. They're prophesying about Jesus that has yet to be on the planet, but he already is. So the kingdom of God is the kingdom of life. That all the curse is broken. And you'll see the face of God and not die. You'll see God as he is. And the revelation of God will be in you. And you are one in God. And you live. Why? Because your sin has been removed. It's like being tossed into an ocean. Hmm. <clears throat> I, I wrote a book called The Overcomers. And... Uh, in that book, it was a vision. And I had a vision <coughs> of walking on a beach. And I was on the beach, and as I was walking, I saw an old man, I mean very old, had a long white beard. And he was playing, a little kid was like playing a little puzzle or something, and he was sitting next to this little girl. And, and I remember thinking, wow, this guy is old. Well, I didn't realize it was the Ancient of Days. It's the Lord. So as I walked past him, I could see a, a tsunami, a tidal wave, a wave of water that was coming towards me. And it wasn't coming from the ocean to the shore. It was on the ocean and the shore at the same time. As, and it was coming this direction, both the sand and the water. And it... And it was intriguing to me. It was intriguing. So as I, as I got close to it, I could see inside the water of all these living things that were inside this water. And the water was on the sand, but it wasn't picking up sand. It was just full of water. And as I got close to it, I realized I was in trouble. <laughs> that I shouldn't be looking at this. And I need to get out of here. So I turned to run. And as I started to run and, and run as fast as I could, I was, I was sucked up in two steps. I mean, I'm in it. And I'm caught up in this, in this wave of water and, I'm, and living creatures everywhere. And it was like, um, like a boogie board. You, know, you ever seen you know, a kind of a sawed-off surfboard in half? Had a little rope on it. And I'm hanging. I reach for that and I'm holding on to this rope. As I'm in this, this, this unbelievable wave, and I realize I cannot hold my breath any longer. And I say, well, I'm, I'm going to die. I'm just, I'm going to die. I, I can't hold on any longer. I'm going to die. So I exhaled, and I could breathe. I, I could breathe in the midst of this incredible, powerful upheaval and so as I start breathing, I was like, whoa, this is cool. I'm going to ride this out then. <laughs> if I can breathe. So I was, gonna, I, I, I was going to try to pull myself up so I could ride on this little, ride this wave of what was going on. <laughs> and it, as I even thought that, it just it whipped me around so quick 
to remind me that I was not in charge. And I wrote it. I just hung on. I didn't write anything. I just hung on. And, it, and, I, and it, I hung on for an extended period of time. Watch. I finally came back to the ground, to the, where I was, where the old man and the little girl were. And I was afraid to turn around because of what I was going to see was mass destruction. Just destructive. And when I turned to look, it was mass beauty. It was the most tranquil, beautiful, exquisite atmosphere I had ever seen, ever. And I woke up. And the Lord's reminding me that he has chosen us during this hour to do the, the extraordinary things that only he can do. And sometimes it's bringing an upheaval in your life. Write it out. It is not here to destroy you, but to perfect you. They will see his face and his name, his character and authority will be in their, head, their foreheads, their thinking. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light. And they will reign forever and ever. Hmm. Revelation verse 22, 21, 22. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty, the Lamb, are its temple. The city does not have a need for the sun or the moon to shine on it for the glory of the Lord. God gives it light and the lamp, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations, watch this, will walk by its light and the kings of the earth, what is the light? God. God is the light. The nations will walk by its light. They'll walk by the light of God. And the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it, into the holy city. And no day, on no day will its gates ever be shut. It's always open. For there will be no night there. It's always day. It's always open. It's always day. It's always open. It's always day. The light is always day. It's always there because God's presence is there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it. Nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Mm. So here's your action item this week. Speak life. Speak the word of God. Speak life. We're going to start a process of creating a culture of righteousness in your house. A culture of God's blessing. A culture of peace. A culture of joy. A culture of Love, a culture of long suffering. Come on, going to create a culture. And so you have to guard what you say and guard what you think. If you're saying, I'm not going to make it, you're speaking against the kingdom because you are going to make it because it already is. I feel, I feel, I feel I'm lonely. Why, why, how could you be lonely when, when the presence of God is with you? Ask, invite. Father, you're here with me. I'm not by myself. I feel a little fear, but I know that fear is not of you. Come here. Send, Father, I asked the angels to go. I don't know where my kids are, but you know. Can you send an angel to bring them to the house and open up? The, can you protect this one? Can you help this crazy kid that you gave me, Lord? And, <laughs> and he'll remind you, that's just like you when you were his age. Oh, okay. So here's what Jesus does. John 6, 63. The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are the full of the spirit and life. John 12, 49 and 50. For I do not speak on my own. This is Jesus talking. But the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his commands lead to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. Guard your words. Speak life. You get into a situation or circumstance in your natural environment, speak life. In your business, speak life. Speak the word of God. If God hasn't told you what to say, don't say anything. 
Speak life. Don't be negative. Speak life. Speak the things of God. Speak encouragement. Speak wisdom. Speak favor. And we'll close with this in James chapter 3, verse 2. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. Now, I'm just telling you, it's a challenge, and you're not going to be able to hold your tongue this week without the Holy Spirit helping you. Guard your words. But I'm helping you today just to break the ice on the junk that the enemy will want you to speak to keep you locked into a life habit that's not of the kingdom. No peace. No, no joy. Full of struggle. That's demonic. And God wants to bless you and give you peace and joy. Why? So you can give it away. If you got plenty of peace, you ought to give some peace away. If you got joy, you ought to give some joy. Sometimes you give resource. But most of the time you just give what you have. Mm. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small runner wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, a tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great force is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on the fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is restless. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. Speak life. You're going to need some help in doing that. So you're going to have to have, to have, to have the Holy Spirit help you. Holy Spirit, help me speak life. I got to get in an exclusive. Now, right, you might be like kind of 80, 20 now. Most of the stuff that comes out of your mouth is kind of junk, but part of it is salted and good. Just sh see if you can get 50 50. See if you can get to 50 50. Then, then we'll keep working and get to 60 40, 70 30, and 80 20 the other way till, till almost you're exclusively speaking life. You're speaking good things. You say, I was just joking. That's not life. I was just calling you a fat head. I was just joking. Oh. Why well, you got your feelings hurt, fat head? I mean, I was just joking. <laughs> speak life, man. Come on. Come on, speak life. Why well, don't I, I never feel like anybody's ever in my corner? Stop that. It's not of God. He's in your corner. Speak life. I'm so, I'm just so, I'm slowly, I'm all alone. You're never alone when the kingdom of God is here with you. When the Lord says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Come on, speak life. Speak life. Sure. You're going to have some challenges. And in the challenge, you're going to feel like, I can't do this. I can't, I can't overcome this challenge. This is it's an overwhelming challenge. You can overcome because he's overcome. And you're in him. Overcome. Oh, I can't think I can overcome. This is just too big. No, you can overcome because he's overcome. And you're in him. Overcome. You can't undo it, so overcome it. You can't go back and undo, so just overcome. You can overcome. Amen. He is designed for you to overcome, for your whole house to overcome. Overcome. Control your words. Father Holy, 
Help us by your spirit to control our words. Let us not be wild and speak things that are counter to your own desire. For you have created a culture of life in your kingdom. That the whole earth is going to be swallowed up in that culture. So we use that right now when we speak life. We choose. We choose life and not death. We choose to speak life. And just our tongue can start the process of transforming the whole house. <laughs> do what only you can do, Father. Do, do incredible things to us in every household, in every residence, in every family, in every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, for all of us. Put a guard on us so when we slip, we don't quit, we just recover. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I lift my hand as a sign that I'm committed to you to guard my mouth. I will guard my words and the things that I say that are not of you, let those things be a thing of the past. And I will speak only your word, a word full of life and hope and joy. Let the fruit of your spirit be the words of my mouth and the behavior, the way I act in accord with your way. Let that be sealed and settled, established in front of the multitudes of witnesses in the kingdom. Let them witness our decision today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We hope that you enjoyed today's message. If God is impacting your life through Overcomer, we encourage you to bless others by investing today. You can give by going to our website at overcomercc.org give or by downloading our app and selecting give as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more messages like this one.